And now I'm excited to introduce our next presenter on today's Hyperconvergence Megacast. Um, that is Maxim from Starwind. He's the Director of Product Management. Are you there, Max? Yeah, I'm here. Glad to be here. Thanks for the awesome. thanks for Yeah, thanks for joining us. Take it away. Great. All right. So welcome everyone. And uh today I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit different implementations of hyperconverged infrastructures and uh what we make at Starwind what makes us a little bit different. Mostly we're going to be talking about RDMA-enabled technology and also which customers are good candidates for hyperconverged infrastructures and where you may want to still do disaggregated system where you have storage and compute separated. Uh, so before we start, Starwind uh, is a well-known brand in the software-defined storage business, but uh, less known in the appliance business. So I want to do a small background to the company. We originally started in 2003. This was a start where we were called Rocket Division Software, and we had our first iSCSI targets released. Actually, at that moment, iSCSI appeared just uh, maybe a year before. Then. All the way in 2009, we realized that software-defined storage finally starts to catch up with uh, minds of people who want to do software storage and not buy hardware sense. So we spent off to Starwind Software and started doing storage only. Then, in 2011, we released the industry's first hyperconverged storage solution for Hyper-V, which runs natively in the Hyper-V stack and not in a virtual machine. And then in 2015, we put together the servers, Starwind Hypervisor Management and Backup Software, and released Starwind's Hyperconverged Appliance. And now in 2016, we're making it better. We're releasing Generation 2. We actually released it already. We're adding storage appliance for scenarios where you have more storage than your node can handle. And we also add ISER and VME over fabrics and hardware cloud gateway so you can seamlessly integrate Azure or AWS into your infrastructure. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So what is Starwind's hyperconverged appliance and uh, what is inside because we all know that uh, not all the companies doing the hyperconverged architectures are building their own hardware. So just want to have a little look under the hood to actually show what we are using inside. Uh, inside any Starwind hyperconverged appliance, you will find industry standard Intel Xeon E5 CPUs or E3 C Xeon CPUs. You will find Intel's SSDs inside. From the networking standpoint, we're proudly using Mellanox Technologies NICs and network switches, and uh, that works extremely well for us. For hypervisors, we do support VMware vSphere, we do support Microsoft Windows Hyper-V, both 2012 R2 and 2016. And also, one thing we do include by default with all our appliances is Veeam Availability Suite. This makes sure that any customer has his uh, backup plan implemented at the moment he purchases the appliance. And when the system is installed in his rack, it already runs backups and it's already configured to replicate data to a safe location. And from the storage management standpoint, this is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, storage market got a little convoluted these days. The storage management can be done either with Starwind vSAN or VMware vSAN or Microsoft S2D, also known as Storage Spaces Direct. Uh, mostly this is done because all three solutions are different and they are used for different scenarios. And we're going to talk about that right now. 
so there are three potential use cases. First one would be small offices, home offices, remote offices, and branch offices. So where you need the smallest possible hardware footprint, the easiest management, and uh, the highest resiliency to, to failures. Then we get to the web scale, which is the typically evangelized hyperconverged infrastructure where you need more capacity, you add a node. You need more compute, you add a node. And then we get into enterprise, or also called in this case disaggregated scenario, where it is too complex to just do web scale. And uh, if you add a petabyte of storage at a time, you add it using a SAN. You don't add it using multiple hyperconverged appliance nodes. So these configurations are much more complex and require custom treatment, which I'll talk about on that slide in a few minutes. So first, if we're talking about uh, small systems, in this case, it's one to two hypervisor hosts, two primarily because customer needs HA, not because he really needs that, but uh, only because he doesn't want to recover the system. It, he wants it to be fault tolerant and he wants it to be non working without any service required or anyone on site managing it. It typically uses one hypervisor. It uh, doesn't need any scaling. It may scale every two or three years, but no dramatic scale is planned for this infrastructure. And in this case, we can use either Hyper-V or vSphere or Zen. And uh, we will use Starwind vSAN as storage management in our appliances because it allows for two nodes. It doesn't have any limitations for virtual machines or storage and it doesn't require any additional witnesses. And uh, for backup, we'll be using Beam Essentials to make sure that all virtual machines are backed up smoothly. And uh, solutions we provide for small offices and home offices are pre-built, pre-configured. So by the time it ships to your location, it's already integrated into your domain. So you just need to rack it, put it into the network, and network admin can start migrating his virtual machines or use Starwind's services and will help him to migrate his applications and virtual machines to these systems. And uh, these systems are really simple, really fault tolerant. So we designed it with maximum automatic features. So you don't need to do any manual intervention in if the lights go out and then the systems restart. They will automatically determine which node has the most up-to-date data, resynchronize, and uh, then start working immediately. And these units were designed with maximum simplicity, so they don't have any sophisticated components. So it's also budget friendly, especially good if you're a small office or if you're a branch office and uh, you're purchasing hundreds of these. Every dollar can matter because it typically translates into thousands of dollars difference onto different solutions. Now, if we get into web scale, in web scale, we typically see four plus hypervisor hosts to start with. And uh, in this case, uh, customers really praise the policy-based management modern software-defined storage solutions are offering. And uh, customers are also planning for consistent compute and capacity scaling. In this case, we're talking about Hyper-V or vSphere clusters. We're not really talking Zen. And uh, in web scale scenarios, we do use Microsoft Storage Spaces Direct or VMware vSAN for core storage management. For additional scenarios like uh, the duplication for hybrid environments or feeding storage outside of the cluster, or doing asymmetric clusters, we also can use Starwind Virtual Sen working either on top of these products or alongside with uh, vSAN or S2D to provide additional features for your environment. 
And in this case, Veeam Availability Suite is used for centralized backup. So the value of these systems is that it's already pre-configured, so it's not coming as a ready node, it's coming as a ready and finalized node. It's pre-tested, so if necessary, we can do burn-in testing and make sure that the system doesn't arrive with any failures. And uh, the biggest selling point for bigger customers is that uh, the entire stack comes from one vendor, so you never have the finger pointing issue. Your virtualization and storage stacks come from either Microsoft or VMware. Starwind works alongside, and uh, the support is always seamless and uh, fast. But what Starwind adds to this uh, is the single point of contact support. So Starwind does add 24 seven support for these systems and uh, we will be routing and solving all the issues, be it hardware, software, or backup solution issue. And now we come to the more interesting part where we go to disaggregation and complexity. So in bigger environments where you have multiple hypervisor hosts, we're typically talking about 10 plus, uh, there are more than one hypervisor, actually more than two hypervisors used at the time because you have your main farm on ESX, you have your VDIs running on either Hyper-V or Zen, let's say, and uh, there is some legacy environment, there are some test environments which were evaluated but never finished, and all of this is now actively working and needs to be consolidated somehow but uh, there is no ability to do a forklift upgrade and just rip it apart and move it to, let's say, a web scale infrastructure environment. In this case, we use Starwind vSAN, again, for unified storage management, because it can operate with Hyper-V, vSphere, and Zen at the same time. It can work with existing storage to be the front end and the management for the existing storage. And it also adds uh, inline dedupe and distributed write back caching to whatever storage is underneath it. So if you have your legacy arrays which do not support dedupe or which do not perform well, connecting them to Starwind can get them more performance and lower latency for their environment. And uh, moreover, Starwind can translate this from fiber channel environments to iSCSI environments. And these days, we're also implementing RDMA technologies. So we're not just uh, talking iSCSI. Right now, we're talking ISER, which is iSCSI extensions for RDMA. And uh, this allows us to get much better performance and uh, much lower resource utilization than traditional iSCSI. Now, from the backup standpoint, we still use VM Availability Suite. And uh, the biggest value from these systems is uh, the unified support for all the components provided by us and additional offerings for managed services to offload the burden of uh, some tasks from your own site administrators. Now, more about uh, RDMA technologies. I just touched it a little bit in the disaggregated data center, but uh, I wanted to add a little bit about what are the performance differences if we start talking new protocols and uh, implement proper offload. So first of all, if we start talking ISER versus iSCSI, we see two and a half times lower latency on most desired workloads, which are 4K random read and 4K random write. This means that most of your virtual machine traffic and database traffic is now fast, two and a half times faster than it was before. Now, if we look at the performance, we see almost the same thing with IOPS. So 
the applications which previously ran slower will now, of course, run faster, or you can run more applications on one hypervisor host, which also works great, especially with modern Windows data center licensing when you have your all of your virtual machines licensed with the host hypervisor license. This means that you're using less money to run all your applications and not wasting them on additional hypervisor hosts like it was before. And finally, if we look at the CPU utilization, we're just paying approximately 8% of a 2660 V4 Xeon for our two and a half times performance gain, which is a really good number. And uh, good news is that uh, we do use ICER already, and uh, the industry standard hypervisors are catching up. So Microsoft is not yet there, but vSphere 6.5 was announced, I think, just yesterday. And uh, they already support ICER initiator, so you can already enjoy ICER on vSphere environments. And uh, we already do our synchronization through ICER. So data locality is one thing when you're writing your data on from your application only to the local node. But if that data can be synchronized using not a proprietary protocol, but instead using RDMA, that makes IO much better and makes your infrastructure much more scalable and fast. But uh, ICER is just a supportive technology. And uh, later this year, we will be announcing some prototypes of a technology called NVMe over Fabrics. Effectively, it is a very fast and clever way to export your NVMe drives to external clients without losing performance and without losing any latency of the NVMe drive. This means that you can use existing compute nodes you have and uh, use Starwind technologies to export NVMe storage from NVMe arrays to the hypervisor nodes. This can be done either by implementing a hardware NVMe over Fabrics initiator or at the first prototype stage it will be a virtual machine or initiator software running on the compute node. And uh, NVMe over Fabrics is uh, one of the future technologies we will be using in the hyperconverged appliance. So in this particular scenario, we're just showing how it works with uh, disaggregated storage and how it allows you to do a non-disruptive upgrade when moving from existing hyperconverged infrastructure with uh, standard vSAN or storage spaces direct to use better and faster storage without ripping apart the vSAN system or ripping apart the storage spaces direct system. So it can all play along in one ecosystem. Now, to wrap up, just wanted to mention again that uh, by default, all systems come pre-installed with the uh, Veeam Availability Suite. This way, we make sure that the 3 2, 1 rule is followed, that you have three copies of your data on two different media, and one of them being off-site. We do not require that customers do an off-site copy, but uh, should customer have an off-site location, we will be glad to help in configuring replication off-site for his most critical virtual machines or for all of his virtual machines. And uh, also, if our customer has an existing Veeam license or any existing software license, there are bring your license options which can improve the deal economics. So you don't have to buy the same license again if you used it before as software and now you're buying it as part of the appliance. We try to make things simple and uh, make sure that existing licenses can be reused. And uh, to follow that, well, 
all the appliances we're offering come with a unified support coming from Starwind. This way we make sure that uh, we give you the fastest response possible and also the most seamless support experience ever. With uh, multi-vendor virtualization stacks, it uh, often comes to a point where you're on the phone with vendor one and they pointed the vendor two and they pointed the vendor C and all you really want is your problem solved. So by using our internal support channels with the vendors and making sure that all these systems are pre-tested and uh, interoperability between different vendors is verified, we get away from all the possible finger pointing and uh, you never have to spend time with multiple vendors on one remote session or schedule four remote sessions in a row. Starwind engineer will remote into the system, diagnose it, fix the issue. If this is a really complex issue going all the way down to hypervisor core, we will include the hypervisor vendor, but uh, we will make sure that the problem is solved as fast as possible and you don't get into any unpleasant support experience situations. And finally, just uh, a few things about uh, our plans for future. I mentioned before, but uh, beginning of 2017, we will be adding full NVMe over Fabrics target and initiator support to our appliances. As of right now, it is experimental and can be purchased when with the appliances if you mention that to the engineers. Also, we are 3D Crosspoint and Optane ready. And uh, these cards are coming in shortly in our hyperconverged and storage appliances. And of course, uh, something which you'll see in 2017 is transparent NVMe to SSD to NeoLinesS to cloud tiering without using native technologies available in the hypervisors, but uh, using transparent tiering developed in the software-defined storage stack. So you should be able to use uh, VMware vSAN or storage spaces direct to do that tiering transparently, and we will make sure that cloud as a tier becomes an essential part of it and will be supported natively and without any third-party software. And with that, I would like to thank everyone for watching the short presentation and we'll be glad to switch over to the questions and answers session. Excellent presentation. Thanks, Max. Uh, we do have a number of questions here from the audience. Um, the first one, uh, this person says, I was a little confused. Does it support clustering for compute and storage both? Uh, yeah, so in the Starwind appliance, there is two clustering layers. First one is the storage cluster where Starwind does block level clustering. And second is the actual compute slash virtual machine cluster, which guarantees that the virtual machines fail over properly and uh, work in HA mode. Excellent. Excellent. Another question here is, is ISER proprietary technology or not? No, ISER is not a proprietary technology. ISER right now is a standard technology available. It uh, is uh, an acronym for iSCSI extensions for RDMA. So effectively, it, the target and initiator make a handshake and connection through iSCSI, but then they switch over to RDMA mode, which uh, kills all the latency, which goes sub millisecond and uh, also offloads a lot of uh, over I, typical iSCSI overhead from the CPU. Got it. And would ISER help all applications or just high performance applications? Uh, technically, it would help all applications. Because in the back end, if we're talking highly available storage, in this case, uh, 
whenever you're writing, you need to write not to one server, but also to replicate that write to the second server. And the faster we can do it, the better. Okay. Um, now, I know Starwin traditionally from providing a virtual you know, iSCSI uh, appliances. Um, this person here is asking, is the Starwin solution hardware or software or both, and is there an option uh, to store vSphere virtual machines? Uh, yeah, Starwind at this point does provide both, let's say, cars and engines. So we do provide pre-configured hyper-converged appliances which can run either Hyper-V or vSphere. And uh, we can store VMware virtual machines. And we can, in the appliances, we can also run VMware virtual machines, of course. This also applies to the Hyper-V virtual machines or, let's say, Zen virtual machines. And uh, we also have a software offering which acts like an engine. So let's say you have your existing compute stack and uh, it, the servers have some local storage. You can also install Starwind on the compute nodes and turn their local storage into highly available clustered storage. Very nice, very nice. And how do you administer the Starwind Hyper, the, the HCA? Is it like from SCVMM or is there a, a different interface? How does that work? Uh, so in the Hyper-V environments, we typically work either with SCVMM or with uh, Five9 Manager for smaller deployments. Because uh, okay. SCVMM is definitely a great tool, but uh, it's mostly used for bigger deployments where customers may also tie it together with Storage Spaces Direct, where they get the most benefits and also make the most uh, of the data center licenses they've purchased. Okay, and, and with, I think this is... Go ahead. Sorry? Yeah, I just wanted to say that with vSphere, we just use standard vSphere management console, and Starwind storage can be controlled either by vVols or can be pre-allocated for the entire capacity. So you'll just get a data store, and uh, you can start putting your virtual machines on that data store. So that will depend on the scale. If that's uh, two to three nodes, it may be pre-configured because in smaller environments, customers tend to manage storage less. They just want to have it pre-allocated and then scale. Whenever they add a node, they just want one more data store or namespace extended. And in bigger environments, uh, we see that customers are more keen to use vVols management for the storage. Okay, and then I think last question we have time for is um, this person is asking about how would they migrate from vSphere to Starwind's HCA? Uh, the migration from vSphere to Starwind HCA can be pretty easy. If you're using vSphere hypervisor on Starwind HCA, you just add Starwind HCA nodes into your existing vSphere cluster and do a storage migration from your existing storage to the HCA storage. If you're doing it from vSphere to Hyper-V based Starwind HCA, in this case, will help you convert the virtual machines and migrate them to your existing environments. In both cases, we do offer free pre free pre-configuration and free migration assistance. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think that's all the time we have for questions. There are some remaining questions there for you. Uh, thanks so much for your presentation today, Max. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone.